We feel like there's a calmness to a lot of our work, which we think is a really important quality. And we haven't really been able to definitively say why that is, but. The current house was a series of spaces that really weren't talking to each other very well. So a lot of the brief was really just about clarifying spaces. A few of the things that we were really conscious of was allowing access to light. That was really important and, and the clients really emphasised how important it was for them that the building breathed and that they had access to good ventilation all through the, the day and through the, every season as well actually. The existing house was in quite a bad way. There was just a series of additions that have been added over the years that really weren't talking to each other very well. They're actually completely disconnected. The existing cottage was almost in its original state. There was a, an external laundry that blocked you know, half of that access to that backyard. And there was a, a kitchen space that had been sort of squished into the, the side, it was blocked off from the, the living space and there was a, a little dining area and really wasn't working very well at all. With a lot of our projects, we try not to see the context as a limiting, it's just sort of the, the nature of where you're operating. So we try and find a way of making the most out of each project within that. It's surprising how powerful getting sunlight in the morning and warmth into your house. I think at a deeper level, we try to be respectful with how we approach it. There's sort of a, hopefully a generosity of space for a sort of a narrow footprint but we're still sort of well below the neighbouring buildings anyhow. It feels like a bigger space, even though it's not technically taller or larger than the ones around it. We were really conscious of the existing fabric and the existing structure that was here too. And that probably did start to inform some of our thinking, particularly around how we inserted new structure into the building and sort of see the exposed sort of steel structural bays. That probably came about from us recognising quite early on that we couldn't rely on the existing structure to hold up this new building. Not, not purposely, potentially, but did sort of provide a point where you could recognise this is where the new building starts. So you walk through this sort of new portal that would insert it to the one in the hallway there, the, the first sort of point where we inserted something new and you were really quite aware that that's the old building and this is the new building. That started to inform this idea of, of one space. So really the, the additions at the rear here see it as one volume where different activities can happen within. And, and those structural bays help to sort of determine or indicate where some of those things might happen. The structure isn't just the structure, it's sort of giving us proportion and, and giving us an idea of where program might take place, but it's also not restrictive. There's kind of a composure to it, I guess. It's not the largest building, it's not trying to stand out, but it's just sort of comfortable doing what it does. The cottage at the front, it makes sense to have the, the bedrooms in those spaces. They're sort of inward facing, this portion that fits that need, that use well. As you're coming down the hall, you're revealed into this larger space and then part of the dynamic of how this space works is that the stair then unfolds further again. And coming down the stair also then links out to the back terrace area. Probably typically a lot of projects as you come through these existing terrace houses from the front door, there's a tendency perhaps to want to locate the, the staircase within that transition zone. We actually consciously move the staircase to the, the other side of the project there's a, a conscious sort of all slowing down as you do that. You can't simply run from upstairs and, and straight out the front door. The bathroom utility space is the back of the kitchen, which forms the back of this space, but I guess is also built in the footprint of the existing cottage. And then for sort of functional and pragmatic reasons, we've sort of put the ensuite and the bathroom combined. So we keep all of the, the plumbing and all of the, the wet areas together.
Darker materials to, towards the original part of the project actually enhanced, we felt, the way that the more open and lighter spaces actually felt. We were really interested in that tactility and the feel of those sort of more, the, the stones and the heavier elements, which then sort of started to inform the, the colour palette that we used in some of the joinery, for example. It is quite a limited palette as well, which we're really conscious of. So really essentially it comes back to steel and glass with, with the fabric of the compressed sheet as well. We've introduced the, the more tactile elements internally. So in the bathrooms, the stone and then ties into the living areas in the kitchen and, and those more communal spaces. We've really been conscious of a, quite a restrained palette in this case. We've used compressed sheet, which, is, which can be divided down onto that grid that we inserted into this building. You know, these are on four metre bays and we then used the compressed sheet, which was installed at one metre increments of that. And then you can even see how that then works in the, the window break up. It's useful in terms of efficiency of materials and, and structure, but it also provides it with a, a rhythm and a sequence where things are aligned with one another. And, it's not necessarily a, a really heavy control of those things. It just feels like the best way to do it. We feel like there's a calmness to a lot of our work, which we think is a really important quality. And we haven't really been able to definitively say why that is, but we feel like probably it comes back to just the proportion and also probably that structure, which, is, which maybe is a common theme in our work, definitely has an impact on the way that you understand a building quite quickly. And the regularity of it has a, has a calming effect on you when you're in the building. It's it, everything and refined and, and really well considered and thought through. I think that's the thing, it's, it's just ordered and not in a contrived or a, or a limiting way, it's ordered and that gives you a sense of clarity about how it, how it operates and why it operates. It's just simple everyday things, so a series of events, simple things that you do throughout the day that, and the way that the building actually affects the way you live. So it might be, you know, sitting on the day that in the sun, in the middle of winter with the sun streaming through, just, just simple things like that. It's not just about simple sun shading or security or a buffer between the, the back laneway or the neighbours, but it's, it's part of all of that. And then once occupied in a certain way, that's got a level of flexibility or you can sort of engage with it and, and control it to a degree. It's not just the curtains are down or they're open or something, but there's a level of uh, I'm engaging with this and it's not difficult to engage with. 